G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, have a look at this BTC dominance. It just continues to drop. Every day it goes down a little bit more. We are truly heading into altcoin season. Uh, yeah, there is huge gains to be made. But it seems that, you know, the coins that are pumping the most are the much lower tier coins at the moment. So it does make me somewhat suspicious that I think Bitcoin... Uh, will start to pump in the not too distant future. We could still definitely go down some more. I don't doubt that uh, Bitcoin could go down more. But again, it usually starts at Bitcoin, then moves into Ethereum and some of these higher caps, and then the mid caps, and then the low caps, and things like that. And at the moment, you know, you can see a lot of these top caps, they're not really doing too much. Yeah, they're getting small pumps, but none of the crazy stuff that they were doing before. I mean, there are still ones that, you know, some that are doing well, but it's more the really sort of low caps now, the true speculating stuff that's uh, starting to happen. So I do think that Bitcoin is going to get uh, ready to go on another run in the not too distant future. Now that drags all the other altcoins up with it, well not all of them, <laughs> the good ones, it'll drag the good ones up with it, uh, but that's what I'm starting to think at the moment, that Bitcoin may be close to its kind of, you know, bottoming out period. Again, it still might take another week or two for it to, uh, you know, kind of start to go on another run, but look, it could happen Monday as well. But look, gas fees, that's how I know that, you know, everyone's going altcoin crazy. The BTC dominance, obviously, is a big indicator, but also the gas. People are just now speculating uh, on lots of things. Uniswap's probably going insane and all the rest of it. Now, we're still under a trillion dollar market cap, uh, and we're really finding it hard to break over that trillion dollar market cap at the moment. There's still fear in the market, you know, from the stories that came out the other day and things that, you know, like the double spend and things that uh, Janet Yellen said. But it hasn't crashed the market, uh, and it's only a matter of time before it picks up and really gets into gear again. And that's what it does. Uh, and we'll go have a look at the charts shortly to show this. But let's have a look. What's been a big mover? What's, you know, in the top 100 at least? And that's, you know, as I said the other day, I recommend for people who are new, invest in, you know, coins that are in the top 50. And really, coins that are in the top 10 are generally going to be a safest bet. Now, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Personal opinion only. But the higher the coins, generally the safer the bet they are. Uh, again, you still need to do research, you know, don't just come in and go, rightio, I'm just going to, you know, pick five random coins. Look, Bitcoin is your safest bet. Uh, and again, my personal opinion is it's here to stay, it's not going anywhere. I think Ethereum as well. After that, it's a little bit riskier. But again, these are still pro good projects, like Cardano has been around for a long time. XRP, if they can get this lawsuit uh, sorted out, you know, there's lots of hate and FUD on it, but it's been around since like, I think 2012, 2013. Litecoin, same thing, been around for a long time. So there's projects that, you know, have a history that make them a slightly safer bet. But yeah, I prefer to stick to mostly, again, like I'd probably say 90% of my portfolio would be coins that are in the top 50. Then I do have a couple of speculators, again, and a very small portion uh, of my uh, portfolio is in coins that are outside of the top 100, but I don't have too many coins outside of the top 100 at all. I like the top 100 and mostly the top 50. Uh, it's just the safest bet for me. But let's have a look. What's really moved? Do we have some big movers? All right, there we go. Quantum. Uh, I'm going to say they were probably outside of the top 100 not too long ago. I could be wrong. Uh, and this pump has put them into the top 100. Uh, Derivia Dow, never heard of it, uh, but there we go. It's just made the top 100. So Aave, uh, one of my favorite projects. Uh, super bullish on Aave. I think it has real, uh, real world long-term value. Uh, again, I'm not saying this is the best price to buy that, but in saying that, I think Aave goes up a whole lot more by the peak of the next run. What price it goes to? No clue. It's just it's too hard to pick that. You know, people like to put out predictions and things. I, I really don't know. Could it go a 10x from here? I think it could. I'm not saying it will. Now, a lot, again, a lot of people look at this and go, oh, gee, that's, you know, 10x from here uh, for a $200 coin. How's it going to do that? Well, because it's so early and it's an altcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, it's at 31000 
there's talk by people that it could 10x by the peak of the next bull run. So do a 300K. So if Bitcoin can 10x, that means most of the other coins can probably, you know, one and a half to, you know, five, six, seven, 10x uh, what Bitcoin can do now. Which coins will do it? I don't know. And is it guaranteed? Absolutely not. Uh, but I think Aave could do a 10x from here provided everything goes well. So you can consider that a $2,200 coin. And look, it could do a whole lot more. Not saying it will, but this is just one of my uh, DeFi uh, gems that I really like. And I've spoke about the ones I really like. Look, the graph got into that as well. Uh, it dumped a little bit at first when I got it, but now it seems to be doing quite well. Fundamentally, a really strong project. Uh, again, have a look into it. I like it. Uh, it's all about uh, data. Uh, you know, being decentralized and not being, you know, kind of owned in a silo by places like, you know, Facebook, Amazon and things like that. Chainlink, obviously, on an absolute tear, has been doing very well. I've been a fan of Chainlink for a while. Uh, Algorand, it's good to see them finally doing, uh, you know, better. Uh, unfortunately, I sold my Algorand position because uh, it just wasn't performing well enough. It doesn't have a lot of hype around it. I really think they need to look into their marketing team. That doesn't mean it's not a good project. It's just I don't think it'll pump all that well because it just doesn't have the hype. So look, we can see some good moves, but nothing sort of too crazy anymore. Things have definitely slowed down in the top 100. But what about losses? Have there been any big losses? Oh, not too bad, actually. Not too bad, but look, Voyager was on such a run. Uh, so of course it was going to pull back. It'll be interesting to see where it comes back to. Uh, I may look to get myself a position in Voyager uh, shortly. It was just on too much uh, of a tear, hence why I didn't want to get on board. So we'll wait and see. I'll have to check the charts, uh, but I'm guessing if it pulls back to around sort of 80-ish sort of cents, 90-ish uh, cents, uh, I'll start to look at it. Hedera Hashgraph, again, took a long while to make a move, now having a pullback. But look, these losses generally aren't too bad, uh, particularly in the 24 hours. I mean, these 20% losses, they're going to hurt, but I'm going to say maybe IOST had an amazing pump before that. You know, like Voyager token, uh, got well over a dollar, uh, and of course it's uh, starting to have a pullback. But look, these losses are quite small uh, overall, and again, you know, you can see bit Coins pulled back 12% in seven days, but that was trading at $42,000. So, you know, to lose, you know, sort of 20 ish percent uh, after a massive pump like that, that's not to be unexpected. All right, so we've had a look at that. Now let's have a look at the charts before we get into the news. So I had this days ago, and it still seems to be playing out fairly well. Look, I'm really not uh, too far off this. Whether it plays out exactly like this, uh, I don't know, but I am guessing that, yeah, I think we'll probably come down to around the $27,000, $28,000 mark. I think this will kind of be the bottom. We can see it gets bought up pretty quickly and even down here. But look, no guarantees. Uh, it is the weekend. It's Sunday here in Australia, so it's Saturday uh, over in the States. We really have to wait for Monday to sort of see whether this is going to continue to play out or as Bitcoin now kind of leveled out around this 30-ish thousand dollar mark uh, and will it just start to you know make its next leg up or will this just be a protracted thing which would be pretty standard for a uh, Bitcoin cycle so let's get a measuring tool so what do we got 31% drop so that's pretty good now, I know it's not good for anyone who bought up here. That's really going to hurt. But all you have to know is that this will likely correct itself in the not too distant future. Uh, you'll make your money back. Again, no guarantees, but likely. Uh, and then it'll likely pump higher as well. But in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, in a traditional bull market, a 30% pullback uh, is a pretty good pullback. Uh, and yeah, this is healthy for the market in the long run. Again, we can see it's getting down towards this 50-day uh, moving average, uh, and then we got the 100 and the 200-day moving average down here. Excuse me. So I'm going to just see if this plays out, uh, see how you know close I was to what I think might happen, which again is maybe uh, you know this takes sort of a couple of weeks, gets down to around about here, and then we start to pump up. But again, maybe we've done it all, and then come Monday uh, is where we just start to make new highs. Time will tell. All right, so a couple of very interesting news stories. So, 
a very ultra rare alien crypto punk NFT sells for 605 ETH or $750,000. So that's the NFT right there. So this is old school, you know, uh, pick, not, it's, the picture type is very old school. Uh, and look, the, NFTs is a very interesting market. I don't know if I'll ever sort of truly get in, in, into it. I'm not so sure about, uh, you know, digital art anyway. Uh, I think the, the bigger market will be uh, in the gaming and stuff, you know, special limited edition suits and things that, you know, kids... Uh, and adults, you know, that gaming are into gaming can buy and things like that. I think that will be massive. Uh, digital art itself, uh, not so sure. Uh, again, it, you know, it can just be replicated too easy and things like that. But again, you're not the true owner of it. You'll always have to have, you know, the code to show you're the true owner of it. But yeah, interesting that someone has paid, you know, three quarters of a million dollars uh, for this NFT. Uh, obviously someone who's been in the crypto space for a long time and probably knows their stuff uh, and it's a bit of nostalgia for them. Uh, or look, it could just be a speculator. No one really knows, but very interesting that that <laughs> sold for $750,000 and you know, congratulations to whoever bought it uh, and c congratulations more so to whoever uh, originally made that and then sold it for $750,000. Well done. All right, almost 10% now uh, of US-based financial advisors bought crypto for their clients in 2020. So how things have changed. You could go back basically a year and you know there would have been almost no financial advisor advising you to put money in cryptocurrencies. They would have still been singing that song uh, singing that same old tune, you know, it's a scam, it's, uh, it's going to go to zero, it's, you know, it's all fake, it's going to be uh, regulated and the governments are going to ban it. That's not happening. It, it's too late for that. It's already into so many of the big businesses that governments would just be crazy uh, to try and ban it now. Uh, and it's a new way for them to get revenue. Yes, they have to regulate it and hopefully uh, they don't over-regulate it, but the tax implications for them are so massive. Now, I know there's a lot of people saying a lot of dodgy stuff can be done using cryptocurrencies, uh, and particularly fraud and that. Crypto crime fell sharply to only 0.3% of all cryptocurrency activity in 2020. Now, you know, some of that would have had to have been, uh, would have been part of the fact that, you know, there was a bit of a bear market and all the rest of it, but crypto is actually quite a safe way uh, you know, in some regards, still dangerous in others, but uh, it's a better way of keeping track of it because, you know, dollars, you don't know where they are and who owns them, who has them at any one time, unless it's inside a bank. Uh, at all times, you should be able to, you know, not necessarily know who owns the wallet ex exactly, but I'm sure that technology will come in the day, but you can tell where all the money is. So, you know, there's that old saying, oh, it's fraudulent stuff and people can do all this and that with it. Well, look at most of the hacks that happen these days. Eventually, the people get caught. Um, you know, look at people that you know, terrorist organisations and that that are using cryptocurrencies. They're starting to use it less and less now because it's actually a harder way to do it. Uh, so, you know, that narrative that was being sold uh, again, you know, crypto is a scam and it's going to fail and governments will get rid of it. It's not happening, and hardly any criminals are using it anymore. Don't get me wrong; they're still going to always come up with new ways. There's always going to be an element. Of criminals that will use this kind of stuff but this is actually the better way for money in my personal opinion anyway and why I believe it to be you know the future and how all finances will be handled uh, in the future I think cash itself uh, I don't know if it'll be around in another 20 to 30 years I think it'll be almost completely and utterly gone uh, you know that's my personal opinion anyway we'll, we'll have to wait and see all right grayscale so they added over one billion dollars last week 1.3 billion to be quite exact and that was just their bitcoin trust so you know anyone who thinks you know bitcoin's overpriced at the moment if grayscale is still buying it at 1.3 billion institutional money doesn't think it's overpriced they're still getting in and remember they're paying a premium for it as well so if bitcoin's worth 31,000 they're probably paying 34, 35, you know, maybe even $40,000 uh, for the Bitcoin when they're getting involved in that Bitcoin trust. And that's the thing. Grayscale, they won't stop buying 
until institutions stop trying to buy their Bitcoin funds. So really, they don't care what price it goes to because it's the new money coming in that makes them have to go and buy more. So I don't see Grayscale sort of slowing that down any time. Uh, obviously, they'll come to a point where it'll start to slow down and people think, start to think, you know, all right, this is the point where we don't want to, you know, put too much more money into it from the institutional side, but then retail FOMO in. And there is some retail FOMO here now. But again, we haven't even heard that PayPal has opened up uh, their crypto uh you know, side of things to the world yet. It's just US investors and look how much uh, Bitcoin they were having to buy up. So wait till the rest of the world catches on and it's offered to them. Chainlink, been on an absolute screamer. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the news that Grayscale are going to be uh, bringing out a Grayscale Chainlink trust. Uh, I don't think that's the only thing to do with it. But Chainlink is just, you know, fundamentally, it's a pretty good project, uh, you know, bringing off-chain data uh, onto the chain uh, and then, you know, rewarding those people with Chainlink and things like that. Uh, super bullish on Chainlink. I have some. There's still that FUD that maybe the SEC will come after them at some stage. Uh, but, you know, and then there's the talk about, is it decentralized enough? Well, I think it was 80% of Chainlink is uh, owned by, I think, 125 different uh, wallets. Uh, and I don't know how many people own Chainlink. I'm going to say there's probably a couple of million people out there that own Chainlink. So is that um, you know decentralized enough? We'll have to wait and see. I'm still uh, bullish on Chainlink. Love the project. Love what they're doing. And there is talk. There's talk that Chainlink staking is going to come out sometime this year. So that will be very very interesting uh, for me. Uh, I'm going to sell half my Chainlink. Uh, I just want the cash. I think there will be a bear market, but I will keep a hold of half of it because I believe that's a long-term project and I will want to stake uh, some Chainlink as well. And as far as I know, you don't need to have you know X amount to sort of stake or any, anything like that. But we'll have to wait and see. That could change and maybe I won't have enough Chainlink to stake. You know, who knows? We'll have to wait for all the information. But I am bullish on Chainlink uh, and they are doing extremely well right now. All right, Coinbase. So they are, you know, talking about doing an IPO. Well, it sounds like they're going to have a secondary market. So secondary markets tip, typically allow current and former employees, as well as other vested shareholders, uh, to sell stock ahead of the public offering. So very, very interesting. I'm generally not into stocks too much. This might be one that I'll buy. This might be one that I'll buy. Uh, and Ripple will be the same uh, if they do an IPO. Uh, again, even if you know they get hammered and XRP you know, doesn't do so well, they still have a real business case there, in my personal opinion, Ripple. Uh, but again, we'll have to wait and see. There's no guarantees. I need to find out what's happening uh, with the uh, SEC lawsuit and all the rest of it. But I think Ripple uh, could be a... Uh, a good investment. We'll have to wait and see again. Not financial advice. All right. And last but not least. So institutions keep buying Bitcoin's dip despite near term volatility data. So yeah, look, it could fluctuate up and down and could possibly uh, continue to go down uh, by a I wouldn't say a substantial amount, but by some, maybe even substantial, who knows. But data from on-chain data site Glassnode shows the number of addresses with a thousand or more Bitcoin, which are often referred to as whales, continued to increase this week while Bitcoin's price dropped, dipping below 30,000 on Thursday. The count of such addresses dropped in late December and has spiked again since the beginning of 2021. So people thought it was getting too high and now the dips are just constantly being bought up. Uh, and that is why I'm still super bullish uh, on Bitcoin uh, and just cryptocurrencies in general. Uh, you know, and there's ETFs coming out. I don't think there'll be a Bitcoin ETF anytime soon, but that Van Eck one that uh, I spoke about yesterday, where they're gonna do a kind of crypto, you know, whole uh, ETF based on the entire space and how the businesses inside it are doing. I think that's a very, very interesting idea. And I think that would be uh, a nice ETF to uh, consider getting into. Again, not financial advice, I never offer that. Uh, that's just my thoughts. Uh, I think this is a big space with a lot of uh, upside potential in the long run. We still have to be careful of bear markets. Uh, you know, and again, make sure that we know roughly uh, where we are in the cycle. 
Uh, and if it's playing out as it has previously, we're still sort of, I'd say we're about sort of halfway through this bull cycle. So again, for me, somewhere around sort of August-ish, uh, I'm going to, uh, I mean, depending on how some coins go, I'll scale, you know, I'll get my uh, initial, you know, money back. You know, if I get into something in the 10Xs, well, straight away, I'm just going to get my money back from that. Uh, and then I'll let the rest ride. But somewhere around August, I will slowly... Uh, start to take in some profits. I won't rush into anything because, uh, you know, it's likely that the bear, uh, bull market could push out to, you know, January, February next year. So I wouldn't want to sell it all in August and then find out that it just kept skyrocketing. But I will slowly but surely start to sell bits and pieces uh, and at the very least get, you know, what I put back in, uh, back in cash. Uh, and then start to take some profits. And as I said, it'll be 50% of basically every single uh, coin that I have, except for Bitcoin. I won't sell 50% of my Bitcoin. I might sell sort of 20%, maybe 30%. Uh, but again, I'm not likely to do that in kind of one big hit. You know, uh, I won't be waiting for Bitcoin to, you know, get to $300,000 because it might not get to $300,000. Uh, but around you know, sort of around the 100K mark, I will probably sell a little bit, you know, 0.2 of a Bitcoin or something or, you know, whatever it may be. Who knows, 0.02 of a Bitcoin, you know. Again, I have to wait and see where that 100,000 happens because if 100,000 happens by, let's say, uh, March to May, well, then I think it's going a whole lot higher. So I won't be in a hurry to sell large amounts of Bitcoin. And again, I think there'll be heavy resistance at 100K. So if I was going to sell some Bitcoin, it'd be a little bit before the 100K. Or again, if it happened uh, early in, let's say, uh, late March or early April, Bitcoin's at 100K. Well, then I'm probably going to let uh, it, you know, possibly hit 100K, retrace and then push back up before I start to sell but that can change on a week to week basis, you know, who knows. All right, I'd love to know your thoughts. Is anyone interested in getting into uh, the Coinbase IPO? Uh, or are you just a total crypto, uh, crypto only type person? And look, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I have a, you know, a reasonable portion uh, of, you know, invested in cryptocurrencies, but I don't plan to have it that way uh, forever. Just at the moment, you know, get in at the start of a bull run, let it do its thing, uh, take your profits, you know, keep some of it, never sell it all unless you, you know, always plan to sell it all and then that's fine. You got to make up your own plan. But when I uh, take some of my profits and I completely uh, am looking to uh, invest in other things and that'll really depend on how well I do. You know, if I get lucky and I can, you know, to, uh, become a millionaire uh, through this uh, bull run, then that'll be fantastic. I'll look to get into some property, maybe try and start a business, uh, you know, amongst other things. Uh, if I don't do that well, uh, then I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But I definitely plan to do something uh, with the profits uh, and I won't be just being a, you know, crypto only person. Although I think crypto has a huge upside and there's a lot further to go. I will be having cash on the side to wait for the next, uh, for the end of the bear market, uh, the next bear market, uh, and then just do the same again. Because I don't think the cycles are going to change too drastically anytime soon. But over time, they definitely will. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. On a few altcoins, they seem to be doing well. Bitcoin, not so much. And I'll see you next time.